It's not a bird, it's not a plane, it's Superhero Slate. It's a modern podcast where we talk about everything that's great. Like movies, TV, superheroes. It's Superhero Slate. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Superhero Slate, the show where we run down the latest superhero entertainment news. We love TV, movies, and superheroes, so let's talk it all out. My name is Chris. And my name is Mike. And this week, we're celebrating Dave Filoni's new Star Wars role. Yay. Yay. Good Confetti. job, Dave. Good Glitter. Job, Dave. Yes. Balloons. If I had those little um, those little popper things, I'd be popping them all over the place, but I don't I don't have any of that. So we'll, we'll talk about what, what, what his new job is here in a little bit. Sony won't quit with bad Spider-Man ideas, Mike. We got two of them we're going to talk about even. Two of them. And one of them, I think you forgot even existed, which is my favorite part of this. So we're going to talk about this horrible one uh, that just won't die. Or it's dead, and they just won't admit it. One of the two. Uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths confirms it's a three-parter. The upcoming DC animated property, which DC animated... As it's consistently uh, above mid, if you will. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I think I, I don't watch a lot of them, but they're always putting stuff out. So I think this is going to be very exciting for people and more. Consistently above mid. That's how that I describe was... our show. If I could <laughs> write a review for our show, we are consistently above mid. That was my Thanksgiving turkey this oh, week. You did great. I, I, I botched it, but it doesn't matter. Nobody cares about turkey anyway. It's all about all of the other things on the plate. And I don't know if you're listening from other parts of the globe, but um, I guess American Thanksgiving is just full of – it's a full of a lot of beige foods. Yeah. I don't know about you, Chris, but when I looked down on my plate after going through the little uh, little buffet line in our yep. kitchen, I was just like, this is just a beige, Do very you... beige plate. Besides the cranberry <laughs> sauce, like like emanating in the only color. <laughs> well, we, we didn't have cranberry sauce, but uh, yeah, it's a very much a starchy holiday, if you will. Mm. Um you know, we, 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 we kept it simple here, here at our house. It was just uh, the two of us. We had, again, the turkey, the mashed potatoes, and the rolls, Mike. Um, you know, uh, for, for two of us, that's more than we could eat for, for like three days. So absolutely that nice a nice uh, thing. And then I've got that stupid song called uh, Taste the Biscuit. Have you seen that on video? <laughs> it's, no. I... Uh, it's just like a lady uh, singing about how good biscuits are. And she says, Taste the Biscuit taste the goodness of the biscuit i'm like well that's exactly a white people uh thanksgiving <laughs> right there but i i didn't have any biscuits but I, I can't stop thinking about that because of of the holiday but um <laughs> oh, overall well, yeah that... I, I i like i we never i never had an experience cooking thanksgiving food growing up so now that i get the opportunity to do so i, I revel in these moments mike i, I know you do as well we, we we were sharing our brine pictures back and forth our recipes right before the show i mean we're, we're madmen out here I think <laughs> it's crazy, but now that the holiday has passed, we are pretty much at the tail end of, I guess, Black Friday weekend. And I think my favorite trend has been seeing the exposed Black Friday prices out mm-hmm. in the real world, which has been extremely satisfying because I think most people have kind of um, gotten over the hype of Black Friday. It's just not quite what it used to be. Mm-hmm. But I just, it was a compilation video of people like in a Target or a Best Buy or like a Walmart. Walmart, and then they lift up the sale price, and yeah. it's literally the exact same normal yeah. retail price. So uh, I would like to think that you know these giant corporations would be like, okay, next year we'll actually put things on sale. But more than likely, it'll probably just be an, uh, a line item in the memo of remove the old prices, please, mm. before yeah. you put up the sale prices. We are tired of going viral and, for selling a TV for the same amount. And I think I think one of the things is, you know, there, there are actual sales out there in the world, right? Uh, I, I was able to buy a TV with Walmart's early Black Friday things. I bought a video game, uh, Mortal Kombat 1, for uh, $40, which I think is normally 70 So as long as you know what the actual value is before you buy something, quote, unquote, on sale, uh, you're, you're going to do yourself a favor, right? Yeah. Um, like, I'm I sitting here right now. I'm, I am hate I hate this week. This time of year sucks because my email inbox blows up with ad <laughs> emails, like, uh, things I, I don't want. So I start unsubscribing in December to most of them. But, like... Since we've been sitting here, I've got an up to sixty percent off video games uh, ad, like a, like a notification uh, on my phone. And I'm like, well, that's they, they know me, but I mean, like, you know, is it is it really going to be the good games you want to buy? Like, am I buying Super Mega Baseball Four 
for Nintendo Whoa, Switch. Whoa, four? That yeah. was the best one in the series. Oh, Miles, uh, Spider-Man. We just talked about Miles, uh, Spider-Man Miles Morales, PlayStation 5, $20 at Target right that's, now. That's not bad, but yeah. you're already a game behind if you're, if you're nabbing that one. But it, yeah. it is great. Well, and that's the PS5 version for those who may not have been able to get the upgraded version. But anyway, uh, yeah, I, I hate the... The, the the ads and promos and by now only three hours left i'm like i'm good man i'm I, you know this year I, I feel i feel pretty good about not getting yeah. getting a whole lot but on the positive side uh everyone now uh by my command can finally enjoy and indulge in the winter holiday seasons mm-hmm. uh we are at the end of november and you know i'll allow it you know i know i oh, have okay. this okay. omnipotent power so you can finally put up all your decorations you can drink the eggnog that you want. Uh, no. the, the wife and I will be hitting up Trader Joe's and looking for the fun holiday exclusive snacks that they put out during this time of year. That's what we're that's what we're up to. That's on yeah. the agenda for us. Yeah, it, it's it's again the, the holiday snacks. Mike uh, sent me on a, on a search for a holiday cheer wine punch. Uh, Did you find it? No, they only had the regular. Damn it! Uh, uh, but they had a lot of the regular, and for the first time I've ever seen in Kentucky. Uh, Verner's, uh, that that like it's like things like a ginger ale. Um, mm-hmm. I've never seen it here, but they had a bunch of it for the first time in the holiday section. Oh, wow. Cra- a cranberry un- gin- uh, Canada Dry as well. So yeah, if, if anyone's unfamiliar, cheer wine is just kind of like the old fashioned Dr Pepper, yeah. essentially it's like a cherry different cola-ish. manufacturer distributor. Yeah, it was kind of like. Uh, the, Dr. Pepper went on, you know, to school and absolutely crushed the competition and cheer mm-hmm. wine, which is like, I'll keep just mixing this up in a, you know, a bathtub. He, he and may not be a it. doctor, but he's got an associate's degree uh, <laughs> in soda. <laughs> he's uh, cheerful. Yeah, that's right. He's got a good personality. But yeah, the punch, I didn't find it. I, I did. We did look. I, I went to a Target. I actually went grocery shopping um, on on the on a holiday weekend, which I absolutely hate because of the people are just awful. Uh, but um uh, yeah, I couldn't find it, but uh, you know, um, we, we did pick up. Was it the Elf, uh, which is twentieth anniversary? Uh, the maple syrup fish, uh, goldfish, but their graham crackers are not actually goldfish. They're maple syrup graham crackers from Goldfish that are Elf hmm. branded. Uh, I haven't got to try them yet, but I'm excited to do that. I, I love I love holiday candy. Uh, we we have a bowl in our living room for for when guests come over, and uh, I found a mint bag. Like a, it's a bag of just like mint. Like there's like the the mint duo Kit Kats, uh, candy cane Hershey Kisses, uh, the candy cane, one of those like little Hershey Bells that have like the chocolate mm-hmm. thing on the bottom, and uh, York peppermint patties. Like I love a good mint uh, uh, flavor in it. So I think that's I think that's cool. It's good. Yeah, with me. I just I just unlocked my. Um, I had to pay thirty bucks for six months to do this. So only recommend it if you got thirty bucks to burn. But uh, Ancestry DNA now does these genetic traits, like things that you might be more or less likely to do uh, compared to your DNA. And I have an extra sensitivity uh, to the all the way to the whole, the most right side of the scale to, towards sweets. Mm. So I think that's why I like candy so much <laughs> because my DNA. So I'm glad I finally have a. I'm glad I finally have an answer for my addiction to candy, Chris. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I could tell you, you know, that's 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 you, <laughs> you in a heartbeat. So um, you just you just never know uh, with with all that fun stuff. Um, I was gonna say I th- I think we're go- we're live but we're not we're not live Mike I was gonna say uh, this is the first time we've not been live forever because I tried to set this up early and guess what I done fucked up and it's it's it's, it's, <laughs> it's frustrating me so we're not live but this will be uploaded later but I did want to say for people who are watching this on YouTube for the first time don't forget to like and subscribe and I'm only saying this because when I said the word subscribe our little button did a little rainbow action below if you didn't notice that so. Um, Hopefully you can you can uh, you can do it. it's a great it, you know we are the best Christmas present to get people I think here on Black Friday Cyber Monday you can get a superhero slate special where we're absolutely free you can you can give a subscription for anybody to our show for free this weekend and yeah, next just weekend, go and to, the weekend after too just go to superhero slate dot com uh, copy and paste the URL and mm-hmm. just paste it in a Word doc and maybe yeah. go to like forty eight font or something yeah. You know what? If you're feeling fancy, like you can italicize it, maybe bold it up, and then just print it off, and there, there you go, free gift. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe you could hand draw a QR code to our uh, oh my uh, Apple Podcast page. You know, if you're feeling real, real. Frisky. Didn't even think about that. Yeah. yeah but uh, anyways, yeah. So we're doing. We're not live, Mike. I'm sorry. I thought we were live this whole time, but here we are. But anyway, uh, we've got some news. Well, I, I, I hate and love 
about a short week, Mike, is it's a short week, you know, uh, for responsibilities and, and you get a lot more eating time. However, in terms of news, we are absolutely dry, like bone dry on the on the news this week. So we're, we're going to go through some stuff here. As usual, we always we always make it work. But uh, anything else for you? We wanted to jump into this. I mean, I I hadn't had a chance to really do anything else this week other than um, see that I have an episode of Monarch Legacy of Monsters to watch and haven't watched it yet. <laughs> well, you know what, Chris? Every second we burn is one second that we're not drinking eggnog. So let's talk about the sinister. Sex. You're not. You're not. You're not selling. You're not selling eggnog <laughs> to me. I don't. I don't care how hard you try. But yes, we're going to talk about the sinister sick. This one Sony property that was rumored to be after the Amazing Spider-Man two, which they heavily implied throughout that movie, and even like the end of the movie. I don't even know if it was post credits, right? Where there's a mysterious man in black walking through, and you see all the the Doctor Octopus arms and the vulture mm-hmm. wings and all the stuff. So they were really hyping it up, and then um, they decided they were actually into making money and partnered with Marvel uh, to make quality Spider-Man content, and that that was great for everybody. However, the Sinister Six name and property is rumored to be back on at Sony with their current live action characters, and uh, I've got at least four names that kind of. Uh, are heavily rumored slash believed to be part of this. And then some more we'll talk about. So first and foremost, uh, Venom, one of the few Sony properties to get three movies uh, Mm -hmm. in the, in the Spider-Man universe of Marvel characters. Uh, Venom three is currently filming. So he's definitely in that list. Uh, Morbius boy, God, he just won't quit um, with that. So Morbius would be there. They set up uh, kind of a Spider-Man against Spider-Man kind of thing in that was the 80 yard post credit scene for Morbius mm-hmm. with, with the uh, with the Vulture, uh, Craven, the movie with Aaron Taylor Johnson uh, coming up uh, next year at some point, and then the other name that came up was Ezekiel Sims, and you may not know what this is, but he was the um, evil Spider-Man suited person from the Madam Web trailer we talked about last week. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, so we got we got four there. So every time Sinister Six is brought up on this show, I just instantly start putting the roster floating in my head. If I had an AR uh, glass situation, I yeah. would just be floating up here in the ether. So uh, two more, you just you, you got the pick of the litter, I guess. But yeah. it would help if it would, they were already kind of established in some yeah. way in the Sony universe. Absolutely. And based on that, we are, I already mentioned the Vulture, right? Michael Keaton somehow made it into this universe uh, at mm-hmm. the end of Morbius. So we have him as part of this, uh, not very much a long shot. However, Michael Keaton's probably expensive. Um, and really, his last um, cameo movie didn't do so well uh, the, with The Flash earlier this summer. Uh, lastly, the uh, that would be five. The, the sixth person is rumored to possibly be the Rhino, who we saw glimpses of in the Craven trailer. However, I have a feeling the Rhino's not going to make it out of the Craven movie. Mike, uh, so I think this might be hopeful. Uh, you mean you, you weren't thinking Paul Giamatti's Rhino? No, <laughs> from the Amazing Spider-Man. No, uh, I I think uh, I, I'm very budget conscious now. Thinking yeah. on this show, since we've gone through all of this Marvel drama of the box mm-hmm. office being poor and them just having uh, to rearrange everything, so, and I can't imagine any studio being more budget conscious than Sony when it comes mm-hmm. to this stuff. Uh, so I, I would think when you start yeah. to fill out this cast, you know, uh, do it on the cheap, right? You know, you, you got, you already got Venom, right? You got, uh-huh. um, you got Tom Hardy, right? Tom Hardy. Yep. Yeah. So like, you, you and you know, Craven has got to be Jared Leto, right? You, no, I mean, Morbius, Morbius. You, yeah. you can't change that. You already got Craven set in stone. Uh, we don't really have no affinity of Ezekiel Sims. So you might as well just like throw in, I mean, Rhino, I guess could be a full CG character. Okay. This is a good question. What is cheaper? A full CG character of, of Rhino that mm-hmm. you could just pay, basically have any voice actor do, or do you like put like a real person in some sort of like half suit, you know? Uh, well, I would say, well, I, I say scratch Rhino completely out from this, right? I, again, I don't think he'll live that. Th- I think he's the villain of the Craven movie. But Craven's half brother is the chameleon, right? Uh, the yeah, he's um, the guy who can like shape shift and become whoever. So mm-hmm. what if we just did the chameleon instead of the rhino? Uh, Ooh, that would be a very cheap, yeah. <laughs> cheap way to do it. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is the uh, hey uh, hey mom, can we get Spider Man toys? And these are the Spider Man toys we have at home. Uh, trying to make a Spider-Man movie. And, uh, you know, honestly, what if... Uh, the thing is, I'm having the struggle. With, what, what movie... What's what's the point of this movie, Mike? What What is the... Why, why are this interesting <laughs> the, gathering? The, the point of this movie is to capitalize on Andrew Garfield's resurgence 
of Spider-Man mm-hmm. and to just he, he cash was not t- out at the box not, office. He was not tied to this at all. Andrew Garfield's name was not brought up whenever they this, talked about this. This has to be in yeah. it. If, if Andrew Garfield is not incorporated into the Sinister Six movie in like some real way, like don't yeah. do it. Like e- oh. even though every time we talk about this stupid Sony universe, I've gotten to the point where I don't care anymore. Do whatever you want. But like if you're gonna do it, like if you're gonna be stupid, right? Like if you're gonna crash your car, take the seatbelt off. You know, just like go all at it. I don't think I don't think they'll be Spider. I don't think they'll be Spider Man at all because they have set up all these anti heroes, if you will, Mike. Like you know, the, the Venom, he's not really the bad guy. Morbius wasn't really the bad guy. Craven probably not going to be the bad guy at the end of the day. Uh, Ezekiel Sin is probably the bad guy. Uh, but um, my, my my fear is they're going to assemble the Sinister Six to fight somebody else who's not Spider-Man. Like, they are the good guys. They have to use their, you know, um, you know, I guess, what, what's the word I'm looking for here? They're not nice. They're not, they, they'll, they'll kill people uh, kind of thing. Like, the Punisher Law kind of kind of mm-hmm. things to get things done. But who are they fighting? I really don't think it's going to be Spider-Man. Or if they wanted to do these, the ultimate version and do the ultimate six, where Spider-Man is the sixth version, sixth member, and they have to like, you have to join us or we're going to kill your family uh, kind of thing. Um, and you do, do you do bring up a good point, even though I, ha- I have totally forgotten the plot of the previous Venom movies. He did turn a positive, heroic... Uh, yeah turn at at the end of his last movie before he briefly visited the MCU uh, in after credit scenes and then came back. He came to the MCU, had a drink, said, this place is cool. I don't know where I am, but I gotta go. I got I gotta go. I, I got bills to pay back at the other. Yeah. Well, you know. also, yeah. I guess if we look at the list, I mean, Morbius is technically a good guy at the end of their movie. We don't know about Craven yet. Uh, mm-hmm. Vulture is not. I would say a not a good guy, but I would say he is kind of on the teeter totter of like you wouldn't have to try too hard in the story to get yeah. him to do something good. He, you know, he ended the, his his thing at least protecting Spider Man's identity from that mm-hmm. the other guy who's supposed to be the Scorpion or whatever of the MCU. So, uh, he yeah he he's not like yeah he's he's got his own interests out, but he's like not trying to actively kill somebody, I guess or murder or take over the universe i don't, I don't know um sounds like an awful idea it, it sounds like <laughs> an awful idea all around um yeah but, the, you know, the uh when the aviary gets the, that, that 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 fucking uh legend of zelda money he's just gonna go crazy with this property so yeah unfortunately yeah. <laughs> uh he and, and obviously as we talk about he, he is a, a a toy maker uh so obviously yeah this is his toy box right here so i don't know if anyone has any ideas of what they want to see in this sinister six movie because obviously i i really don't think it's going to be spider-man i think they're going to try as hard as they can um to to figure it out and I, we, again, we don't have names we have writers we don't even have actors so we this hopefully is just a they have to say it out loud so investors are like, oh, they have ideas. So mm. They're doing things. Um, but I want to pump, pump the brakes and go back to the Marvel things. Um, I saw another report saying since the um, the multiverse saga has started, uh, the MC has done $8.1 billion in uh, box office revenue total, which is around 800000 per movie so far. So a lot of those, each movie individually, box office woes, they, they fluctuate up and down. But overall, if you look at them average, they've actually come out pretty pretty solid pretty above the bar i thought that was a very interesting big picture view rather than like macrocosm of each movie so i thought that was very interesting so if anything mm-hmm. else comes out of that we'll we'll come back but um the other thing we're going to talk about i sent this to you mike and I, I i think i forgot it existed so i'm going to assume you forgot it existed is that there's a show called silk spider society uh in works at amazon and this is about the character silk who actually has direct ties to ezekiel sims um <laughs> Uh, because whenever Silk was, she is a character who was bitten by the, the, the spider that bit Peter Parker after it, Peter Parker knocked it off of him before it died. It bit somebody else. It was her, gave her spider billies. They noticed that she had um, some sort of uh, this multiversal spider thing. So they put her in this, her, 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 her father or somebody put her in a, like a multiversal bunker where she couldn't be, detected by these villains um i think ezekiel sins until they let her out when she's like 18 or something very weird comic pretty cool character overall but yeah anyway they're making the show but amazon studios who's making this is being sued by the wga uh because they have not um restarted the writer's room or have been paying the writers since the strike wrapped up a month month and a half ago oh pay them (laughs) yes so um 
this is there, there's there's two things to this you're like why well i mean obviously they're not working they 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 don't need paid sure but the stipulations to the contract whenever the 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 new agreement was signed with the wga is that all productions uh can't have to uh whatever they were paused for have to be extended and paid for even if they're not really you know started back up so since they haven't started they haven't started paying them yet but um the writers on this show uh i don't fault them they they're they're, they're taking you know they're they're trying to get work out there are contractually obligated to this show and cannot find other employment due to that contractual obligation, even though the show's not started back up. So they yeah. are in a weird place where they can't even get work to, to get paid and Amazon isn't paying them. Yeah. Which, it even used to be much worse. Uh, I know the writers just recently went through uh, negotiations, but the time before that, when they did their contract, one of the bigger, um, one of the bigger asks that they got was uh, time to find their next project because there was so much exclusivity around being a writer that even if your show only went like 10 weeks or something like that, you couldn't start looking for work for a couple more weeks or a couple more months. So they finally just got that fixed. Yeah. So it, it must suck to just be like, uh, I can't go find work and I'm not getting paid and no one's worked all summer <laughs> anyway. Really need this money yeah. just to pay my rent or, you know, even yeah. at the best case scenario, buy gifts for the holidays. So right. yeah, they should be sued. Yeah. I, I feel bad that the last thing on their you know resume is Silk Spider Society. Uh, most of anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, we were talking about this earlier this week um, in chat, and I was just like, uh, as much as I don't want this to exist, I want them to get paid. So, yeah, yeah I, again, is Amazon not starting it back up gives me indications that they are going to cancel this. Right? Um, there are some other shows. This is not the only one. This is the one in our sphere of superhero movies that that is that is affected by this. So I think this mo- this show. Uh, which was announced in 2020 even uh, we here we are you know a little over three years later it has not really gotten anywhere right they're still in the writing phase and uh, I, I there's some other shows I, do, I think Amazon's gonna can it and say like you know we don't have the money for this uh, this this show is off the table and hopefully you know that is a, a best case scenario for everybody writers get paid we don't get to watch this show Mike so uh, hopefully cross fingers Another crazy news this week. Boy, I love crazy news. Suicide Squad 2016 version uh, has popped up on my radar yet again, Mike, because David Ayer is out there. Um, People are like, oh, David Ayer, James Gunn lied to you. You'll never see your Ayer cut. And David Ayer's like, look, dude's working on the DCU. He's got a job to do, focusing forward uh, on his new movies, his new cast, everything. Uh, him and I got uh, Peter Safran. They're all working forward. They don't need to work backwards kind of thing. Uh, But then like two tweets later, he's like, the A or cut of Suicide Squad will change the course of history. And I use these words literally. Change the course of history is what he said. And I cannot think of a movie ever changing the course of history. <laughs> uh, so I, I'm very concerned about how the Suicide Squad will do this in 2016, Mike. I mean, was there a plot line in the original air cut about Kim Jong-un from, like, North Korea? Because that's the only thing I could think that might possibly change the course of history i mean i am curious though like how much is the release of the air cut have anything to do with james gunn right you know he's working on a new universe this seems more just something like an executive at like max would do you know similar to the snyder cut right of just like oh we don't need gun in this at all this is just about purely distribution of a legacy content it, that we don't need gun involved in this. Well, you know? and I think the other part of this is James Gunn's blessing involvement or anything else for any property means jack shit because he co-wrote Acme or coyote versus Acme and they were still mm-hmm. going to can that movie. So like does I, 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 you know, James Gunn probably needs to bless anything DC related coming out, you know, going forward. Um, that's live action, uh, possibly even animated. Um, we got something else to talk about that, but like, I, I, yeah, like like can can he pull the strings to do this even though they were going to cancel his own movie, right? That was non DC related a minute ago. Um, yeah. I'm I mean I've I have just personally I have never seen a director's cut do so much categorically better than the theatrical cut to like really change my overall opinion on it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean that that Suicide Suicide Squad movie was so bad that. I can only imagine it getting so much better. It's just like, yeah, there's probably footage that they cut, right? But 
the basics of the story, I believe, are just there. Like, my problem of that movie was not execution. I, my problem of that movie was there was something in every category that was so yeah. flawed. So, you know. If I remember correctly, the, the entire third act was, like, he, he lost the edit pretty early on, and the entire third act was redone. Um, which I would like to see how this movie ends under him, right? You know, we uh, one of the um, – I can never I, – I, it's been so long since I've watched this. I don't remember. It was, it was El Diablo was the character's name or whatever. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I think he had a, a bigger importance to this. But, you know, you can't fix the weird um, – can't think of the actress's name who played the villain in this. And she had, like, the weird dancing thing every time she oh, was the, moving around. The Enchantress. Yeah, yeah, Enchantress. I was like, yeah, this, there, there, there are things building up to this. I would like to, I would like to see it, Mike. But, I like, this isn't something I need to lay down and stop everything I'm doing to, to promote. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, put it, release it, put it only on video on demand so people have to pay to see it so you get some money back from it. I, I don't know what the cost is going to done, but I mean, sure, I'd like to watch it, but like, I don't, I don't think watching this is, I'm going to watch it and be like, yeah, that was probably better, but I, I'm not going to ever revisit that another time after, if that mm-hmm. makes sense. Um, thank God we stopped doing um, watches up to the MCU to ca- catch up on all the films before we got to movies, because that was just getting unwieldy. And <laughs> I made a playlist on my Plex this weekend of the DC uh, EU movies just to kind of see what that looked like, right? Because I forgot Birds of Prey was even a movie. Mike, did you, mm-hmm. you remember that one? Because um, <laughs> I was like, I probably should watch Aquaman before I buy my tickets, um, which are available, by the way. Uh, pretty empty theaters. Don't You don't have to rush out and buy them right away. Uh, but um, yeah, I, I just, I'd like to see it, but I'm not like clamoring for an A or cut right now, Mike. Uh, any, any, would you at least watch it if they release it like kind of casually? Oh, yeah, I would watch it. And yeah. I feel like I, it would be in a, good place because it's been so long since i've seen the first one it would be kind of like re-watching it and rediscovering it for a whole new time mm-hmm. yeah i I'm probably have a mandela effect on it like oh didn't that happen in the first one probably like no <laughs> no it didn't but uh yeah so if you guys are into to your air cut maybe um you know just wait and it'll eventually come out and we can all talk about it in a few years but the next james gunn slash dc live action property coming out is in fact superman legacy and um, there's some new casting this week. So we for, have uh, Skylar Gizondo, uh from the Righteous Gemstones to play Jimmy Olsen. So they're they're getting a proper Jimmy Olsen mic instead of the military one who wasn't he got he got killed or something in Zack Snyder's like the Jimmy Olsen who was like the reporter with Lois Lane in the Midwest I think early on. Um, and then Sarah, yeah, yeah go ahead. I was just going to say this uh, This actor, Skylar Gazzando, uh, I love this guy. Uh, pretty much every movie I've seen him in has been he, great. He looks just uh, like he, a Jimmy Olsen, too. Oh, yeah. He gives off Jimmy Olsen vibes hardcore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's great. Uh, so so he'll, we'll have a, a proper uh, Jimmy Olsen. The other one uh, is Sarah Sampeo as uh, Eve Teschmeyer, Te- uh, Teschmacher. Teschmacher? Uh, she's um, from, if you remember the uh, Superman movies from the 70s. 80s as she was a uh, daily planet employee um also jimmy olsen we've also i've heard a lot of like the daily bugle is it the daily bugle uh no that's spider-man what's it daily <laughs> planet um is going to be a huge part of this movie it sounds like they're like you know they're casting like a, a, a perry mason uh, and some other people like really focusing on the newspaper aspect so I'm, and we haven't seen that in a, in a hot minute right like um the only line i can ever think of was uh lawrence fisher and means his my favorite line of his is like, in other news water wet um, <laughs> uh, and i love that but so i think i think that's very interesting they're focusing focusing yeah on this. well it's like a it's a it's an interesting balance right with, with superman being this ungodly powerful hero compared to all the other heroes that an audience is kind of used to seeing on the screen right but then also we're asked to worry about his day-to-day job, right? Mm -hmm. You know, we worry about a normal human's day-to-day job because like, oh, we don't want them to be homeless. We don't want them to go hungry. We don't want want them to be vulnerable in our society. And like Superman's like the least vulnerable kind of character that you can think of. And you know that you can play that off, I would say pretty well in a comic book because you, there's tons of issues. So you can tell smaller stories. You can play it off in like an episodic show, but movies are supposed to be like, you know, bigger, events so i'm curious how you get us invested in like a smaller like reporting story you know i'm, it, I'm up for it for well, sure i think the other part of this is what we've seen so far with the daily um 
planet, boy, this is going to be hard, uh, is that all the other movies, he was the only superhero, right, that they were reporting on. Uh, so in this, with Superman, there's already Green Lanterns, there's already the Authority. So is this newspaper focusing on those other superhero going-ons around the city or world? And, you know, he's technically hidden up there. Like, he's a Superman. He, he They don't know he's Superman. He's, he is working at the thing. But he, like, he's in the middle of everything at the same time. So I think that's going to be a very interesting play if, if they are, in fact, covering the existing superheroes in this universe. Uh, the other big rumor out of this is Nicholas Holt. Uh, uh, X-Men, Days of Future Past, slash, uh, what was the other one? Um, First Class Beast himself. It's rumored to be Lex Luthor. Mike? I think, I mean, I like Nicholas Holt. We're a Nicholas Holt yeah. household, uh, so seeing more of him is great. Yeah, he. Um, I actually just saw a, uh, some photos. He's in the next Nosferatu movie, um, and he was also in... Um, what was Wasn't that? he in that movie with Dracula with already? Nicolas Cage, uh, yeah, yeah. Renfield. Yeah, so so he uh, he's actually um, very much in this Dracula kick right now. Looks <laughs> like, uh, but but as you know, Lex Luthor, I think he has the intensity uh, to be that kind of mm-hmm. character. And it could pull it off. Um, he he was also in the um, he was unfortunately it was canceled, but he was in the show The Great, which was kind of like a s- kind of sic- satirical. Um, retelling of um the 18th century of russia so he was just supposed to be this uh total asshole uh of a of a king i'm trying to remember what king he was i think it was like robert or peter hold on i'm looking it up right now but anyway he was great at being uh kind of like a dick in that basically you know the antagonist so i think it would work Mm -hmm. yeah and i remember um uh what was it Trying to think, it was a zombie one. Was it Warm Bodies? He was really good yeah. at Warm Bodies. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's an older one. Uh, he, he he was big earlier. And, oh, Mac, Mad Max. That's what I was thinking of. The one where he he is, he's the one who spray mm-hmm. paints his mouth silver. So like he's a he's a good actor. Uh, recently, he was like said in Renfield in the Menu. Uh, he's he's doing a lot of good stuff uh, going on. Uh, did you find it the great Peter the Third? Is that what you? Uh, I think it was just Peter. I think in in the okay. in the show he's known as like Peter the Great. So okay, yeah, it, it, yeah. I just looked look down here so um yeah uh pretty pretty cool on that and lastly someone else pointed out online and uh this has been making the rounds is that all casting characters uh most before i guess before this uh jimmy olson or well, maybe jimmy olson if are like the superheroes are legacy characters meaning like they are not the first of their name like we talked about last week the casting of the engineer and technically uh that that actress or the the character um is not the first engineer in the, the mm-hmm. DC universe. Uh, they have Guy Gardner as a Green Lantern, which he was not the first Green Lantern, right? That's Hal Jordan uh, from that from that era. So maybe, like, maybe they're going to approach it, the story from this angle of, you know, Superman's always been this beacon of hope. So maybe Superman is going to come to um, maturity in this world of all of these heroes. And maybe they just aren't very good Mm -hmm. at being heroes, right? They're just kind of all looking out for themselves. There's really no greater good. There's no just organization, right? There's no hierarchy when it comes to all this superheroing. So maybe Superman rises up, you know, and he does what he's good at doing, which is being the Boy Scout. And he kind of just rallies everybody to be better so i would like that yeah i, I think so so I, I think that's very interesting in that that regards as well so maybe maybe we'll see like you know have the superheroes been around long enough kind of like Watchmen, right where, where Watchmen was like oh there's you know um i forget the, the girl's name but she was like the silk specter too right like mm-hmm. you know um you know there's there's like maybe heroes from the 40s uh, 50s, 60s, and then and finally Superman's, you know, in a modern era. They, they kind of did that with Kingdom, the Kingdom Come comic book series from the 90s. Um, that were like, oh, all the, all the classic heroes are now older and, like, the younger ones are just kind of out of control and wild. So I, I, I'm excited to learn more about this movie kind of going forward and, and, and what they do with it. It's got a lot of weight on its shoulders, Mike. A lot of weight on its shoulders. Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths. This was this was a uh, for those who may not know, this was a comic Crisis on Infinite Earths with a one of the huge big crossover comic books. Uh, I believe in for DC in the 80s, 90s, every 10 year, every few years they do a crisis series where all the all the multiverses are wiped clean and there's only one left or they they're they're recreated so on and so forth. It's a big multiverse thing. 
uh, was Arrow tried to do this a couple years ago as well, right? Uh, with uh, mm-hmm. with that, but um, they are finally animating the original comic book, if you will, in 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 true DC fashion, creating an animated series. And we have our first trailer for for Crisis on Infinite Earths, uh, confirming a it's a trilogy of animated movies. So there'll be three. And B, that they are, in fact, focusing on um, a multitude of different, uh, I guess, variants of superheroes, if you will. Including, like, you can see multiple Superman or a couple Batman and so on and so forth. And it feels very dour. <laughs> like, very, like, oh, my God, nothing's going to really, good's going to come out of this kind of kind of trailer here. I don't know if you've had a chance to watch it yet. I mean, it's been a minute since I've checked in on the DC animated universe. And the first thing to me is uh, it seems like the art style has kind of changed a little bit. You know, they're still kind of doing that kind of classic American action storytelling with, you know, the character designs. But all of the like the line qualities are a lot thicker. Uh, it just everything feels a little bit more graphic um and its representation which looks kind of cool also but some of the mo some of the motion feels a little bit odd there's like a there's like a scene where like the flash is running in the trailer mm-hmm. that like looks like there's a just like kind of this bizarre like kind of like emotion tweening on it but you know i'm seeing it out of context but uh yeah well i guess we'll see where it goes yeah they, a, a very iconic storyline yeah they usually put about three or four of these a year still surprisingly um this is uh, this year we had Legion of Superheroes, Batman the Doom that came to Gotham, and Justice League War World came out. Uh, and then this was one of the Justice League Crisis on Infinite Earths was announced at San Diego Comic Con earlier this year, coming twenty twenty four. Then remember, uh, Watchmen is going to be coming after that. So yeah, you can see um, kind of through that. These are uh, part of the uh, you mentioned the uh, the animation style has been updated right a little bit. I think to to crank out these movies three a year. They it seems like they've made I wouldn't say some. Uh, they haven't taken the quality back, but they've made some uh, some adjustments, I guess, to make it, maybe make the production quicker, right? Uh, across that. Now, uh, what's interesting about this is if you if you look at the credits, they are not uh, including voice actors from the main animated movies, like um, like the main ones we we talked about. Like War World has like Jensen Ackles as Batman, right? And like you know big actors, uh, because they are going to fall under um, the Tomorrowverse. Um, Brand, are you familiar with the, the Tomorrowverse uh, label mm-hmm. at Batman or DC? Mm-mm. No, I'm not. So essentially, they, this is like they can do whatever they want uh, without um, using the same actors over and over again. Like uh, Tomorrowverse, gotcha. this is like a a, 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 a a future that could come to be, if you will. Um, and uh, I believe the um, this has only been in the past few years. If you go look, uh, there was the larger, as you as we mentioned, the DC animated universe, like the, the a bigger collection, like where everything kind of ran together. Um, and then once that ended, I believe with a, uh, I think it was Apocalypse War, they started uh, focusing on the uh, the Tomorrowverse stuff to reduce the cost because you don't have to get the big name actors to do the voice acting. And I, I couldn't imagine this trilogy using all the big name actors, how unwieldy that cost would get just to make mm-hmm. an animated movie. And um, obviously, you know, um, we're not the audience for them, so I don't know who's buying them. Are they going straight to Max? Are there people buying them on demand? I don't know. Um, but this looks pretty cool. I, I, I never I, – I follow the, the the loose plots of Crisis on Infinite Earths, but I've never actually sat down and read the comic book, so I think I'd rather watch it across a three-parter. So you guys can check out the trailer in the, the show notes if you want to. As we mentioned at the top of the show, uh, Dave Filoni – Got a new job at Lucasfilm, Mike, and um, you 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 sent me the message. Damn, we didn't get the job, uh, <laughs> and uh, it, it's, it's, I find that very funny because he has now been named chief creative officer at Lucasfilm. It's uh, always a bummer to find out this way that you didn't yeah. get the job when you see it posted all over Variety Ka- that somebody else got. <laughs> Kathleen, we're disappointed. You could have got two for the price of one. Uh, and, and you could have just called us and told us, hey, we're going in a different direction. You know, Dave brings his avatar, the last airbender history with him. And you guys just don't have that. I understand. Like, really, it's not personal. But uh, but overall, I, I think um, Dave being named chief creative officer at Lucasfilm, I, I think this is a great announcement, Mike. I, I, I've not seen anyone actively be upset at this announcement at all this week. So uh, this is great. Some of the things he did mention was that he originally uh, oversaw or saw – Star Wars projects near their completion, like in the editing phase, right? Like at the end uh, and trying to help kind of make the story work or fit into the larger picture. But now he'll help oversee the stories 
probably even before their creation, like right when they're whiteboarding them, right, right when they yeah. greenlit. So that'll be yeah, awesome. this was yeah, this was all announced in a in an interview that he gave as well, and he was quoted saying like, "Oh, now I get to be there at the beginning when these projects start, which is great because it seems like Filoni has an idea of what this universe should be and where it should go. So now he's not going to be really massaging things to fit what he." Thinks should happen he gets to start from the very beginning and set the tone one thing that i find really interesting is that he's chief creative officer for lucasfilm right now it's not like a huge you know um lineup right you basically have star wars um indiana jones willow and i i is there anything else outside of that for lucasfilm i don't know um, so I do wonder, does he have any like Indiana Jones ideas, any, anything cooking that he'd want to do? I'd, I'd be kind of curious. Yeah. I, I mean, I would, I'd probably, whether he's doing it or not, maybe making ideas, but I'd be like, Hey, we want to, if they are going to make any more Indiana Jones. And the only thing I can think of is that upcoming Bethesda game, because you know, whatever, you know, Hey Dave, can you help us tie this together? Because we, we've been making these movies for 40 years, um, kind of thing. Um, I was I was looking up here. I I, I went and pull up American Graffiti is the other franchise, Mike, and only had two movies. Oh, they should, that'd be hilarious to reboot that. Um, but I, I there there is part of me that's a little nervous, right? Only because we just recently talked about Ahsoka on the show. I, I wasn't a huge fan of it, and that had Filoni's DNA all over his fingerprints or on that every inch of film. Uh, you know, if there was actual film shot on it, he's his fingerprints on every keystroke of the editing board as well. So it's just, I don't know. I'm hoping that he can just bring everything together and it's just great. Maybe, maybe this, I mean, really a chief creative officer, their goal is not to write everything and yeah. direct everything. Their job is to shepherd the projects. So if, I think he would be very, very good at that because he's great at having a vision but maybe it's time to let some other voices come in and write well, it. <laughs> I, yeah, I, well, I mean, he, he he has written his projects, and his projects alone all tie together as one creative project, if you look at them, right? Whether whether you liked it or not, he, he, he stayed true to his Clone Wars, he stayed true to his Rebels, through Ahsoka as well. Like, everything is it's one big story string, if you will, creatively. And what's cool about, you know, I think Chief Creative Officer in, in this regard is that, like, you know, he, Dave Lane, if you go and listen to his older interviews even – he has such a reverence for the Star Wars universes, right? Like mm-hmm. he's not out, he's not, you know, he didn't offend anybody by what he did. You may be confused, but he's not like, oh, he may, he went out of bounds. He was always within the bounds of Star Wars, of what we knew and what we've we've come to, to, to know about it. So I think him being able to say, hey, look, you know, in Star Wars, you know, George did this in episode, in, you know, episode three or something like that. So we, we, we can use that. Or uh, he mentioned, I think in the interview, he saw like in the, episode two the clone war or the attack of the clones there were some other universes on the star mats whenever obi-wan kenobi couldn't find kamino and he was like what are those galaxies we can bookmark those for later so i just think his reverence for all of star wars what george lucas did you know um what you know disney like everything he i think he's able to say hey look this all works in here and um we won't and ever need a uh i guess a we will probably get a star wars timeline book but like there's not going to be those big confusing moments like Marvel's had to do, right? Because they've had different people. They didn't really have a CCO over Marvel stuff. So I, I'm excited about it. I think he's got some ideas. I, I know there's, what, three movies and two TV shows we haven't seen yet uh, out of Lucasfilm, right? The three movies they announced uh, earlier this year. And then um, Skeleton Crew and The Acolyte, right? So uh, we've got those, but um, I'm excited for that. They also he also said that he's um, they're starting to explore uh, Ahsoka's season two, which which makes sense. Uh, my guess is they'll probably do again Amando four, Ahsoka two, Skeleton Crew, and then um, maybe jump into those movies sooner than later. I, I would mean, love, I would uh, love a good it, Star Wars movie in theater again. I don't know about you. But. We would, we would. I, I, I do have to say, I do appreciate just the overall success story for Dave as a person, though, right? Just starting out, you know, cutting his teeth in the animation industry, you know, then slowly working your way up to bigger and bigger projects, and now, all of a sudden, he is just, honestly, he is 
not far down the ladder from like the CEO of Disney now. Like yeah. he is high up enough now where he could get a meeting if he wanted it. And I, yeah. I just think that's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And, and you know, he uh, being able to uh, wear his little cowboy hat or whatever uh, all the time, sitting in with George Lucas when they were work and, you know, working on the Clone Wars before Disney bought them. And now he's up there. I, again, I don't think he'll ever take a, uh, this might be his peak Disney role, right? Or Lucasfilm role, because he doesn't seem like a businessman. He, he wants to create, he wants to be the creative person. So, so hopefully with that, but I, I would love yeah. to see him hopefully maybe, um, you know, I know, I know people had some issues with Mando season three, maybe shepherd Mando season four into some better areas, right. Going forward. Cause you know, he was a big part of the first two seasons and not so much the third one. If you yeah. will. I'm looking through his IMDB right now. And the oldest thing I can find is, got started being a storyboard artist for king of the hill which is just nuts just go back in time in 1999 look at like you know a row of people drawing for king of the hill and go like that guy you'll be in charge of star wars someday is right. just really fun for me oh yeah i mean you look i mean stuff like, you know i uh i i remember seeing mission hill like but like if you look at the artwork mike that's not a show that's going to take off very well if you mouse over that uh, the oblongs, Kim Possible. I mean, dude was just, just making story, just doing storyboards for forever, um, until until he, he got a you know a director job at Avatar. So that's great. That's a that's a that's a bottom up kind of thing. Um, I also looked. He's got special things for Star Wars Visions. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, and then uh, yes, but anyway, it, congratulations, Dave, on on your Star Wars stuff. If you need some ideas, call us. We got ideas for you. We'll give you some feedback. Let's jump into some Fantastic Four rumors, Mike. Um, the first big rumor is actress Anya Taylor-Joy is rumored to be cast as the Silver Surfer, or at least a Herald of Galactus in the movie. Yeah, we were talking about that last week, that they might be kind of changing the gender for a character, which I would say historically is not very gendered. It's just a smooth, reflective yeah. uh, humanoid. Yeah, uh, could be so anybody on the other end, right? Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure somebody's already firing up the... Um, the the AI art machines yeah. of no, uh, no, boss logic on Taylor on, Joy boss, boss logic's Chromed. already on this, <laughs> um, but uh, so the, one of the other things was like you know the, the 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 person who reported this they are a trusted scooper who's got a pretty good track record but they think the wires may be crossed they say it could be a herald of Galactus maybe Frankie Ray or a character known as Nova the two Nova two it's not really a Nova like we know them but like a another character that is called Nova back in the seventies. Mm-hmm. Um, who who was another Herald of Galactus, who is a, a female embodiment of that. So, like, you know, do you need Doctor Doom, Galactus, Silver Surfer, and the Fantastic Four in one movie? Could you use another Herald of Galactus, then introduce Silver Surfer later kind of deal? Um, mm-hmm. I, I think, to me, either one is fine. Like, I, I'm not going to care either way uh, who they choose, as long as they don't kill her off after the first movie, if you will. Like the Silver Surfer is like an ongoing character who has his own journeys when he's not with with Galactus and does his own good stuff. Has some cool well, powers, but if I had, if I had to bring it back to the conversation earlier, this is not a budget hire. Yeah. Anna Taylor Joy, she is too expensive. Marvel, right. you you gotta you gotta bring those uh, returns on the box office. Uh, Find somebody cheaper. You're just gonna chrome them out anyway. Right? Yeah. So so it makes me think maybe maybe they take on a human form uh, kind of thing. I've also linked a list to the Heralds of Galactus in the show notes if anyone wants to take a look at that. Um, but um, yeah, she's also not uh, averse to uh, superhero movies as she was uh, magic in uh, the uh, was it. Um, Oh my gosh, was it it's not young, New Mutants? New Mutants. I want to say Young Mutants, but it was New Mutants, <laughs> um, which uh, people have forgotten about, including myself, uh, the, even the name of it before now. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that's great, great casting either way. I think she'd be a great actress in this. The other uh, bit of news is uh, Killian Murphy is a front runner for Doctor Doom. I mean, menace, that guy's menacing as all hell, right? I think yeah. that works. Uh, also, not a budget hire. Um, <laughs> recently uh, seen in Oppenheimer, one of the biggest movies of the year, uh, next to Barbie. Uh, and he's also been the Scarecrow in the Nolan Batman films. So he's not, again, versus playing that. He he has just got one of those, like, thousand-yard stares that you're just like, I'm uneasy with you, uh, with that look on your face. The, j- the jawline helps, too. I feel like the more intense the jawline, the more I can be terrified of you. So that's helpful. Yeah. 
Uh, what's that? What's that show he's in? Uh, is it um, Peaky Blinders? I, I keep seeing a lot of clips of him yeah, now that he's come up in this. He... They're like showing like clips of him like being like a, you know, kind of a, a hard ass badass in that in that show, right? Uh, in the like the dramatic scenes, talking with other people. I think he'd be. I think he'd be a great actor. I think he'd be a good get as well. Uh, any any. I mean, I would I would take the as much as I like Mads Mikkelsen. I would take a new actor over someone who's already been in the MCU to be. Doctor Doom. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's so much pressure on on the casting and character of Doctor Doom, right? Uh, it seems like the a lot of the MCU moving forward is going to be centered around this character, so they they got to nail it, and like not just the acting quality. Like that seems honestly, I feel horrible for casting directors because that is like now the easiest thing to do of cast somebody for their acting ability. The hardest thing to do is look beyond that and be like, are you going to be in a scandal and ruin the next 10 years of this movie studio? Right? I mean, you were, you were mentioning, I don't remember if we brought it up on the show or not last week, or maybe it happened in the middle of the week that the, the rumor that um, Kang and Jonathan Majors wasn't being recast was because there was a stipulation yeah, in the last, contract that yeah. no one else could be king. That that stipulation is going to be Marvel's never going to make a deal again where they can't recast. So maybe that will kind of future proof it a little bit. But yeah, yeah, it's really hard to look into an actor's eyes and go, "Are you going to be a headache <laughs> in the future?" <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, so I was not going to bring that up simply because you know that that came from another. You know, uh, show I listened to, and they 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 got their scoop uh, from someone who who was trusted. But there's their segment of the show, Mike, is called "Hot Scoop or Shot of Poop," and um, <laughs> and I was you have to credit that if you say that. So yes, we will. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and break down into this. I'm going to add it into. Um, I'm going to add a new bullet point here in the middle of our show. Uh, Avengers Kang Dynasty, and we'll go into this. So yes, so on the the hot scoop or shot of poop segment, Mike, uh, from the show. Uh, Jonathan Majors, someone who was in the room with with them, the seen the contract, physically says, you know, we've talked about variants. You know, Loki, you know, had multi variants, right, in his show of different actors and different people, even an alligator. But Jonathan Majors' contract specifically said that no one else can play Kang. If, if it's Kang, it has to be him, and that's why, um, you know, they they haven't really recast anybody yet be, until everything is kind of smoothed out um, or. Even if it doesn't get smoothed out, this is like the big sticking factor of why they may have to shift to a Doctor Doom or another character uh, down the road. Um, so, um, so what 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 do you do in this situation? I mean, do you think I think Disney has enough money and enough, um, I, I guess, uh, clout to say, look, you broke your contract due to like whatever breach we we find we want to find right that, that that has brought you to the court. That means we can't. We can't use you because you are a liability, so they may be able to break this little line in their contract. Um, but like you mentioned, boy, what a situation to be in legally at this point. Yeah, it does make you wonder, like, what's the per- perpetuity on that, right? You know, we've been speculating for a while at the end of these final Avengers movies that there could be one big universal reboot and they go back from square one. Could you theoretically reintroduce a Kang there? Yeah. I mean, the big, the big unfortunate side of all this, Kang is such a cool character just within, you know, the universe of Marvel, right? Very menacing, very cool. And it's, it's a shame that, you know, it sounds like they might not get a chance to recast and continue in well, some way. I think they could recast. I think uh, all contracts that have either, it's not, it's a time or um, a number of films, right? Like he has to be in a number of, of projects. Uh, until uh, to to fulfill the contract, and if it's fulfilled, then that. But until his contract is fulfilled, no one else can be king. Which, you know, I guess that that makes sense. Boy, what uh, if if you were uh, the actor getting that contract? Boy, well, how how excited would you be um, <laughs> to to do that? Now again, this is just we are on a wild ride. I, I thought this this um this trial is this trial still this week? Is that this week for Jonathan Majors? I think it's supposed to be before the end of the year. Uh, I thought it was November. Let me pull it up here. Uh, November 29th, Mike. We are on the cusp of this trial in three days. Ooh. So maybe we'll have some new- maybe we'll have some news next week. Yes, maybe maybe next week. Um, my guess is <laughs> that's the last thing you want to do. Uh, like, yeah, he's found guilty, and by Friday we have fired him and found some other. <laughs> yeah. But we'll we'll see what what it is. But like, this is just um, what what a what a world to be in for that. Um, so yes, so you know, um, 
to, to keep moving on, uh, we've got some, some more news. Avengers Secret Wars, we talked about how um, they have let um, Daniel Destin Cretton go on to work on his Shang-Chi 2 and Wonder Man project because they want to hire one person to do both movies, right? Uh, King Dynasty and Secret Wars. Uh, but uh, currently, the front runners for this are either Sam Raimi doing both movies, which I think we've both expressed a mild pleasure in, in that, him doing that. I think he's very, if he's got a vision and he knows how to see it through. Or the duo Justin Benson, Aaron Moorhead, who uh, were known for uh, working on Moon Knight and are recently the two um, guys they, they hired to fix Daredevil, Born Again, uh, are the top runners to direct these interconnected Avengers films. I mean, this this is this is honestly the biggest downfall, right? When you do the big spectacle of a media day where you put on a big screen all of the logos of all the movies that you want to make, right? Yeah, I'm sure it's great for the stock price, right? I'm sure it's great for the shareholders and the board to see this whole big plan that you've laid out, right? But now you're beholden to it. You know, how much less drama would be in the news right now if they never introduced all of these phases of these movies coming up, right? And like, it, it's a real double-edged sword because it's fun and it's exciting to see everything that they're going to do. I love, I love it doing the- You get a bump the, in the, the SEO ratings for a long yeah, time. But. Yeah, I love doing the podcast, you know, after all of those announcements because you could just dive deep into all of it, but it, you're, they're shooting themselves in the foot every single time. It feels like they're mm-hmm. always pivoting and having to change things. So it just seems like maybe pull it back a little bit and only do a, yeah. one or two years at a time of an announcement, you know? Yeah. And, and we've, we've talked about this. A lot of these announcements came with Bob Chapek who was like, yes, announce everything, all the, do all the things like more, more things equal more money, right? Everything you touch is a billion dollar property because the last two, the last, I guess, three, three out of the four movies you just did were billion dollar franchises. Keep going. Like everything you do is going to be a billion dollars. So yeah, they were like announce everything because everything you announce something, that's a billion dollars on the screen. And obviously that is not true. It's not true at all. Uh, mm-hmm. you, you get a pandemic, you get, you know, too much projects at once. You, you get a lot of stuff bloated up, builds up, falls down. You know, you get, you get um, stuff ebbing and flowing uh, all over the place. So yeah, absolutely. I, I think... You know, obviously, to me, and, and we've said this before in the show, Mike, waiting six years, seven years, possibly eight years between Avengers movies, big downfall. Huge, huge mistake. You got to – even the Avengers movies, they don't have to be world-ending. Maybe they just have to be bigger, right? Like, I think um, Age of Ultron, despite its flaws, had a really good example of, like, the universe isn't ending. The world is in danger, but it's not like, hey, we're in a city again. We're not in New York every time this is happening. Um, so, you know, I, there, there's opportunities, but they just didn't do it. Um, and they, they really should have, um, built an Avengers movie to, to bring these characters together sooner and, and, and go with it. But, um, yeah, like we're just going to see a lot more changes. Now we have some blank spaces, um, in there we'll, we'll talk about those here in a minute, but also about secret wars. Uh, they also, this, uh, this reputable scooper said fantastic Four, Shang-Chi two, Deadpool three and Spider-Man four are the big four movies laying the groundwork for Secret Wars. Um, kind of like how, um, uh, what was it, uh, uh, not Black Panther, but like uh, was Cap- Captain Marvel kind of set, um, no, what movie set up the in, in Infinity War? Um, I thought it was, uh, oh, just, wasn't but, there an Ant-Man movie just before Infinity well, it was, War? It was right after, but like the, the movies that have like, I guess the, the Infinity Stone movies, if you will. The ones mm-hmm. that focus in on Infinity Stones were the ones that lead up. So this is kind of like these four. Fantastic Four, um, Chang-Chi 2 has been a rumor to be titled The Wreckage of Time. Deadpool 3 is dealing with the multiverse, right? TVA rumored. Spider-Man 4, Spider-Man is supposed to be the um, the chosen one for the TVA from the MCU to, to fight uh Kang or whoever it may be at the end of the day, um, kind of thing. So I think that's that's that. I think those are four good movies to to maybe rest your laurels on, if you will. Mm-hmm. I'm like, yeah, the, the, put put your energy into these four movies. Put your money and make them make them good, and yeah. and this will pay off. I would say you have the biggest maybe potential an improvement with Shang Chi two, where you know you set your base. You know, it wasn't like. It wasn't the hugest MCU debut of all time, but I would say it was solid. And MCU and uh, Simu Liu's like acting, mm-hmm. just prowess and popularity has only risen, especially after being in the Barbie and, movie. And the fact that it had really good fight scenes, right? Like, like it, it after being burned by uh, Iron Fist for two seasons, we actually got some 
good mar- martial arts in, in the MCU. Yeah. It's like you, I feel like the biggest X factor is there. I mean, and they tease yeah. the kind of quantum slash cosmic adjacent, you know, a part rings. of his Ten Rings. So I feel like there's a lot to go there, and that's what I'm most looking forward to. It's just like it's it's fresh, it's exciting. You know, I I wasn't necessarily head over heels for the movie, but I did think it was good. So I I just that's the one I'm probably most excited about. I yeah. mean, Spider Man Four. We're already so many appearances of Tom Holland Spider Man. I'm yeah. not saying it won't be good, but I feel like you got to think of a way to it, not reinvent, but something yeah. has to change no matter it, what. So many installations in, right? Well, and I think Spider Man Four has the most change out of this, right? Simply because where we left him off, he is essentially um, everyone. No, no one knows who he is, and he's alone in New York without Tony Stark's money for the first time in the entire franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I think that one's very interesting. Deadpool Three is the first Deadpool installment in Marvel, which is going to be. Uh, I, to me, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how he skewers us all to hell in this movie mm-hmm. and, and bringing back Wolverine. Fantastic Four, I think, to uh, Shang-Chi 2, I, I trust Daniel Desson. I, I think that's going to be great. Fantastic Four has the biggest question marks for me because we've never had a good Fantastic Four movie. Um, the other ones, you know, we've had good three good movies in those franchises that are good. Fantastic Four is my biggest X factor, if you will, because I'm like, you've got you've got to be good at this and it's got to have great actors and great story and great chemistry so so maybe we'll mm-hmm. see how that kicks off but um to me it was funny that it's a a first movie second movie third movie and fourth movie in these franchises that are the ones kicking this off too which i thought was interesting like uh uh intro sequel 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 kind of deal but that, that means nothing i'm just intrigued by patterns at the end of the day <laughs> Lastly, a little bit more Marvel series out of the same article came out. Uh, Thor 5, Eternals 2, Doctor Strange 3, Black Panther 3 are in some stages of development at Marvel as well. I don't think anyone is surprised by this because we've reported on all these at some point in our series. Um, in, in, in the all the episodes, all 451 episodes of the show we've done, we've talked about these at some point. Uh, Beat in the works. Um, yeah. Uh, probably the biggest... What's the bigger surprise to me, Chris? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, asking you, Thor five or Eternals two? I feel I, like those are the, the I those are the biggest surprises if I had to rank them. Thor five, I, I think. Um, man, boy, I tell you what, I'm not surprised by either of them. Um, if I'm going to be completely honest, because uh, Eternals two, I think, set up a lot of like three different things to happen. Right, it had the, the Blade, Black Knight. It had them going off with the celestial uh, Asherim, and then it had what was the um, the other the other celestials picked up Harry Styles along the way, right? Mm-hmm. I think it set some fun things. Again, pandemic movie, um, people just didn't care for it. It's it's got the longest gestating. Thor five, Chris Hemsworth is just such a even in Love and Thunder, which isn't like a great movie. It's still he's still such a good actor in it. Like he he's he you'd love to go see him play the role um so i think thor 5 is proven track record of thor then you know uh the dark world and back to ragnarok and then down to love and it has the most ebb and flow so i think it's the most surprising simply because we've never had a fifth movie out of any superhero yet so i i'm just i i that's a long way to say i don't have an answer because to me they're neither surprising i guess um how about you which one would you pick then eternals I mean, it just, it just, just, I don't know. To me, it seems like Thor is just kind of run out of gas. Yeah. Uh, If you're, if you're going to do another Thor movie, it seems like the, the best thing to do is sunset the character. Right. Um, it, it just give them a nice wrap up. Like all of the other original Avengers have had like at least something to kind of like bring their character full circle. Even Hawkeye, who's still technically out there, at least we've kind of get to see him in retirement in some way, you know, yeah. kind of like hang up the bow a little bit, yeah. uh, but Thor, not so much. So I think you set, you, you, you sunset Thor and then also introduce another big character, like use that moment to bring somebody else and not necessarily somebody to take over the mantle of Thor itself, yeah. but just another opportunity, I, kind of like how Ragnarok, well, you know, just focused on Hulk, you know, I think, I mean, I think Thor Ragnarok had a had a good end like you know a, a downer but like a good end right like you know bringing loki and thor together even though they lost ragnarok and they were refugees and then obviously uh infinity war kicked off really really dour for thor and loki i uh, mean 
a- after seeing such a an amazing finale to Loki season two, it like I'm trying to decide: do I want Thor to meet that version of Loki in some aspect I, I, or not? Right? I think Thor. Here, here's what I want to happen: Thor doesn't need a separate movie before Secret Wars, but somewhere in Secret Wars, Loki and Thor should meet. All right, and 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 Lo- uh, Thor should see that his brother ended up being a hero, right? Being a, a good person. And uh, Loki can, you know, prove to Thor that, you know, he doesn't need to be the arrogant guy that he was what we saw in the first Thor. And Thor 5 can technically just be the rebooted Thor in the new MCU post Secret Wars. Like, make that yeah, Thor okay. 5. Yeah, I'd be I'd be okay with all that. And, and it, but, I mean, at least the, the X factor of Eternals is it's just got started. So you can, you know, you can try to, you know, turn the ship, you know, uh, adjust some things, tighten some bolts, you know. Yeah. So uh, there's still potential the, there. And that so The Eternals kind of reminds me a little bit of the Incredible Hulk, right? Like, no people watch it. The actors, they all got into a spat. You know, they didn't know what to do with the Hulk until you know they recast Mark Ruffalo for the Avengers. They've not really had a Hulk project since then, right? Like solo. So like Eternals, I feel like it's like, yeah, we can tweak act- actors if we need to. We can we can pull back, pull push in whatever we need to do. But I think Eternals has a, such a cosmic presence that they can get off Earth and have better stories than what we they were showing on Earth for thousands of years. Um, well, I would also like to see maybe in the new MCU, since, you know, as Guardians have the idea of like life, death, rebirth, Valhalla, right? Like maybe post MCU, the reboot, like Chris Hemsworth is there, but he's like in Valhalla, right? Like, hey, the 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 idea of you know, being reborn is a different, you know, actor, perfectly fine. We have Thor's and all these other Odin's, Loki's, whatever. But like you still get to see that Chris Hemsworth in Valhalla. Man, kind of thing. you do. So, so now my brain is starting to turn and I'm just starting to think about the end of the MCU, if you will, before it, it's rebooted in some aspect. And I know we keep talking about it like it's fact and it hasn't technically been announced, but it just seems like that's the way you go it it almost seems obvious and it happens in comics all the time so why not mirror you know what they've done anyway but yeah now i am thinking like what is that moment on screen right you know uh rightfully you should just have a nice cathartic ending at the end of your movie where the characters have won they ride off into the sunset or whatever right but then there's got to be one one final post credit scene for the MCU, right? The thing the the things that have like built up the MCU over time more than anything, which is mm. the post credit scenes, the things that people always talk about and wait for, right? This post credit scene I would imagine would be way longer than any of the other ones, right? This, you know, this could possibly be like 10 minutes long like in a, like a couple scenes, right? And it it's like a moment like you're describing, like some sort of like all powerful ethereal marvel character like doing something performative on screen that like i don't know resets the the universe mm-hmm. in some way like maybe it's lady death maybe it's the watcher with some sort of soliloquy maybe it is like a classic character like thor you know in the in the afterlife right doing something but something symbolic on screen that's telling the audience like this is over and i'm you know this and is, i'm resetting it all come back yeah. in like two or three years and watch you know the x-men <laughs> number one yeah i think it's it's maybe more of a to me, if, if they do Secret Wars, it's going to be all these universes come together, and then the reboot is, again, things that work. You know, get, keep those things that didn't work, get rid of those. And you see, maybe it is a montage of, of the, the things that worked, the characters you want to keep in their lives at some point, right? Kind of, kind of, and that's your new kickoff. Like, if you look at the Secret Wars comic book, um, Reed Richards ends up with the... Um, the ability to create new universes and he, he brought everything kind of back. So like, is it that flash of white and everything's kind of normal and maybe a couple people remember, right? Like, do you, do you want to have that memory of the Marvel that was, or do you not want to have that is going to be my mm-hmm. question. It's like, I think it'd be fun to have that, you know, some characters have a memory, but if you don't want to um, don't, it could be like, maybe the new universe is like at point is a starting point. Maybe it's a, a like a, kind of like a Kubrick style, like here's the universe flashing forward to, to now this new universe, right? Is born from great day zero and going forward. And like, and then that's where you get to see maybe some of those X-Men moments, like, you know, Magneto and the concentration camps, like, you know, like the, the iconic scenes that we've seen over and over again. And mm-hmm. you don't have to play those in the movies. You just get to see like, Oh, 
this is alluding to X-Men. Oh, here's the Fantastic Four. Here, here's like the characters we want to set up and they're some important moments. So we don't have to show those origin stories again, like a young kid, yeah. you know, Peter Parker bitten by a spider, you know, a, a de-aged Tom Holland bitten by a spider. You don't have to show it, but like, here are the moments that are defining this new universe uh, very quickly. Yeah. It is an interesting problem to solve though, that you bring up is uh, you, you know, you get to the final Avengers movie, you just cast a couple of actors to be characters that we haven't seen yet. You know, like our, our Dr. Dooms are Fantastic Fours and the audience loves mm -hmm. them. The Fantastic Four, finally a Marvel movie to break back into like the 1.5, you know, billion dollar range or something. And it's just like, yeah. well, we can't wipe them from the universe. Right. They're doing so well, but we got to reboot stuff. So yeah, maybe there is some sort of function of like, we'll keep some of them around, but that's, more than everything yeah. is going to change. That's that's and that's how the comic book worked because in the main 616 Marvel comic books Miles Morales as Spider-Man did not exist. He was an ultimate Spider-Man only, right? And that's 1610. But um in the comic book because he gave Molecule Man a cheeseburger, uh he was like, "You know what? You get a, you get to stay." Uh, kind of thing. Like he he just happened to have a cheeseburger thing and he's like, "All right, so he he got pulled over the maker, the evil Reed Richards." got pulled over as well um, in, in that regard. So th there are ways to, to pull them together, I think. Um, and the Molecule Man, one of the things I was thinking of, and, and we haven't got to our last bit here, is what if that's not... Molecule Man is the person who like can control molecules, and he created this universe, right? Like Doctor Doom uses power to, to hold this together. What if that's Loki in this? Like the Molecule Man is Loki. Like he's the one who gets to pull this new universe together. He's like, all right, you, I'm going to pull all the best things out of this oh, I, because he's I mean, the one yeah. creating that timeline going forward. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of checking a lot of the boxes. You have a legacy character that we've seen since the beginning of the MCU. Uh, we've been very endeared to him in the Loki show. He, he is kind of in a position of power where he could, you know, reset everything. So like, yeah, maybe there is like, you know, I can't save everybody, but you know, I can save a few. So yeah. Uh, but, and coincidentally, he's saving all the people that, you know, yeah. Hollywood likes the most. Right well, now. He, he could even, you know, phrase as I've seen the good and bad of everybody in all the universes and I'm going to pull the best of the best kind of thing. So mm -hmm. um, it sounds so fun. I like this idea. A good it's thing. fun talking about yeah. it. I hope it's as exciting watching it as it is talking. Absolutely. About. And I hope, I hope we're wrong and we are surprised and they do it better than we could ever imagine on this show. Mm -hmm. Lastly, uh, Miss Marvel, Moon Knight, and She-Hulk are shows uh, in line at Marvel to get second seasons with the new series structure in place, was this rumor. Um, now, again, with the new series structure at Marvel, showrunners will write pilots and show Bibles, and then they will not film the entire series and then fix it in post. They will treat it like a true TV series rather than a movie <laughs> and then... So funny. It all up later. What a novel idea, make TV how TV yeah. has been made. Um, yeah. Well, like I, I like I've said in the past, like I don't I don't bemoan them for attempting to try what they were trying because if you look at it on paper, it kind of made sense. Like we've had so much success making all of these feature length movies this way, and our streaming shows they're they're like a little they're longer than our movies, but they're not as long as like a normal running like thirteen episode like Netflix Daredevil, right? So it's mm -hmm. just like, yeah, we might be straining the movie making machine a little bit to make these series, but like what's a better idea? Just totally reinventing the way we've done all of our success. So I'm not surprised how they got there, but it, I'm not surprised how it turned out either. Yeah, it's it's well it's one of those things is like, hey, you've been doing this one way. Can you we want you to make T V shows and like, well we don't know how to do that they were like, just do what you've been doing. Obviously it worked. And, and and no one was there to tell them, hey, this is wrong and this isn't working yet. And 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 I you know, I I, I applaud it takes a, a big uh again, Bob Iger or Kevin Feige, whoever did it, to say, You're doing it wrong. We've spent too much money. We need to spend more money to make it right. And I think that's a big for a corporation to do that rather than to scrap the whole idea because they could have, they could have just said, you know what? No more TV shows. You know, this is we're we're, we're done. We're only going to focus on movies, but like for them to say, we're going to fix everything and do it the right way and still focus on that content. I think that's a, that's an important decision they, they made with this whole property um, mm -hmm. because, you know, obviously again, a corporation is all about their bottom line, their money. And uh, I, I could easily see them saying like to save a couple billion dollars and Marvel gets no more TV shows and people be like, Great idea. That saved a bunch of money. Uh, so, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I think these three shows, again, they talked about serialization rather than announcing new shows, saying the ones that we've already done are getting more series. Loki season two, again, 
had no right to be as good as it did. But that was great. So hopefully they can take criticism or feedback and make these other shows. Season two is just as good, if not better. Um, I do want to point out Miss Marvel is still the highest rated uh, series, uh, Disney Plus series for Marvel uh, right now, which I thought was great because she was such a treat in the Marvels, Mike, as I think we mm-hmm. both agreed. So um, if you've not seen that, I recommend you guys checking that out. Yeah, I do wonder how much of uh, how successful the Marvel streaming series catalog is, though. Like, I the funny thing about these like shorter series is I feel like I'm much less likely to ever rewatch them, right? Mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm I'm more likely to rewatch a movie because it's just a one time session of sitting down on the couch. But I'll probably never go back and rewatch loki season one or season two even though i love them Mm. right you know it's just not something i feel like i need to dive back into so now how useful does that end up being for the disney plus catalog if there's not a lot of rewatchability to it right kind of feels like sometimes you play a video game you put a lot of work into it and you just feel like that was great i don't think i need to play it again but i had a fun time playing it Mm. so i guess we'll see how that goes yeah yeah i would say um we might be outside of that that uh, that line of people they're they're looking for right for these shows mm-hmm. to rewatch really because if they can get your money for how long is it like usually like two two and a half months per show mm-hmm. um or maybe one and a half six episodes summer summer nine whatever they they've got it but uh, I'm I'm interested to see what an average viewer like does someone go back and rewatch it what's their you know I know some people um I, you know I, I was saying my friend of the show Brian he re he's rewatched Loki several times just to like kind of put some of the pieces together um so I, I know there are people out there who are re-watching them it's just um maybe, maybe not us we we have a lot of we have a lot of uh content on our thanksgiving plate mike and it all mm-hmm. looks a little beige if you will but anyway that's the show for this week mike uh if people want to watch up to what you're can find you buddy yeah they can uh read my web comics at life rewards risk.com chris if people want to catch up with you where are you you can find me on instagram valdan87 or video game uh systems of the same name if people want to know more about a show what we're doing what we're up to maybe come back and listen about that jonathan majors trial next week or <laughs> listen to our aquaman uh in the lost kingdom review in a couple of weeks where can they find all that good stuff at oh all you got to do is visit superhero slate dot Com. That is the place where we put all of our useful information, like our awesome show notes, our upcoming release calendar, our archive of all of our old episodes at SuperheroSlate.com. You can find us on Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Spotify, wherever else you like listening to podcasts. We got merch at SuperheroSlate.com slash store. We love hearing from you. Reach out. Let us know what's what's a worse idea, Thor 5 or Eternals 2. Or Sinister Reach 6. Out. <laughs> yes well uh, that's not fair okay, that one's yeah. uh i think that one's a little bit easier to figure out yeah. uh but we also we love our super fans so if you want to be a super fan of this show all you got to do is share the show with a friend share the show with a buddy and we will be here next week folks that's right we'll catch you guys next week bye